Hello, today I am going to add a gas range oven tutorial for my kitchen studio project. Check out the materials and measurements on the description box. I am using a foam board material on almost all part of the oven because it has a smooth surface and it is cheap and easy to cut. And here are the pieces that I have already cut. And these are the patterns that I will be using for the door and the top. Now take piece B and use the small pattern to trace on it. Remove the excess part and sand and smoothen the edges. Then set it aside. Take piece F and use the big pattern to create an opening for your oven door. The pattern is actually not necessary. You can create the opening without it as long as it is not too big. When you create the opening in the middle part, it is best that you, you use an exacto knife with a fresh blade. I didn't have any fresh blade so instead I used this big cutter to cut the inner part. Sand the opening if necessary. Then set it aside. So piece A is the back and if you are planning to add some lightning in your oven then add a hole on piece A. The hole that I drilled is 25 millimeters from the top edge and it is just big enough for the bulb to fit. Next, take the two pieces E and the two pieces H. Then mark both pieces E 40 millimeters horizontally from the top. Then glue pieces H just above the line. Then, take piece A and glue piece E together. The grill holder should be lower than the hole if you made one. Next, take piece C and glue it together with piece E and A. It should be just over the hole if, again, you made a hole. Take your piece J and then glue it just below the grill support. Then take the second piece E and glue it together with the other pieces. And then next, take piece B and glue it on top of piece A. Before I will continue gluing the other parts, I am going to paint the semi-finished part and all other unglued parts with enamel paint. I won't suggest an acrylic paint unless you have a really good brand because the foam board is actually covered with paper that, which is the smooth part and once it is soaked with watery acrylic paint, it eventually separates from the foam. If you use an oil-based paint or enamel paint, don't use any thinner or spirit because this will melt the foam. And bear in mind that oil-based paints takes a long time to dry. It dries between 2 to 4 hours depending on how many coatings you made. For your oven, you can use any colors that you like. You can use rustic or retro colors. And here for pieces B, C, D, and G, I painted it, it with um, silver color, which actually didn't look like silver, but instead more like gray.
While waiting for the paint to dry, you can start making the small details like the stove dial. For the stove dial, I used a scrap clay and simply cut a round shape and a smaller round shape that I put on top. Then I painted it with black enamel paint. For the faux glass, I am using a pet G film foil, which is similar to an office acetate sheet. I don't know what is the other name for pet G film, but if you cannot find it in your place, use a 0.75 mm thick acetate sheet instead. These are um, easy to cut and I used a scissors to cut it to the shape I want. So I kind of just used a wood glue to stick the faux glass and I applied the glue as close as I can to the edges of the oven door. For the door hinges, I used a paper clip which I cut and bent the sides to form like a big staple wire. The idea is to insert the wire on the foam, but let's do that later. Next, I wrapped the wire with a thin cardstock and glued the cardstock together. If you have a hollow lollipop stick, you can also use that as well. Then I painted it with black enamel paint. For the cooktop, you can design whatever you like. You can have the gas burner, the electric coil burner, or the induction pipe. As for me, I chose to make the gas burner and I am making a very simple faux iron cooktop which is made from the foam board and paper clips. Then I painted it with black enamel paint. If you want to add details to piece D, go ahead do this before gluing the four dials. So here I added a black rectangular shape which I saw in our stove. But maybe later I will add more details or maybe not. So for now, I just add um, this shape. And once you are done, you can let the paint dry and then glue the dials on piece D. To add the hinge, make sure that it is attached to the bottom which is the wider part. So as you can see here, the top where the oven handle will go is much narrower than the bottom. And since the foam board is really soft, so I kind of just push the wire in. Next, take piece D and G and glue to their respective places. Here, I glued piece D first and then before I permanently glued piece G, I tried to fit the oven door first and see if it has enough space. If not, I can always make adjustments by sanding piece G. Next, apply glue to the cardstock on the hinge and attach this to piece G. Now for the stove burner, I only used a foam craft and for the oven handle, I used the foam board. So for the burner, I just added some silver dots around it. That's where supposedly the fire will come out. So again, I am using a foam craft which is much softer than the foam board. And it is uh, usually used by kids when they make craft. Then, after the paint dried, I glued the burner and the cooktop. And lastly, attach the oven handle. 
If you have noticed, I didn't add any grill here but you can add it if you like. That's what the grill holder is for. Then I added a battery operated LED light that goes to the hole I made on the back of the oven. This is by the way not a dollhouse light and it has a white bulb. I will eventually change the wh uh, white bulb to yellow bulb when I get my new supplies. Thank you for watching this tutorial and hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and get notified for new videos. Bye bye and see you next Saturday.